Today I'm going to talk to you about how to use floorplanner.com in your classroom to teach your students. So the first thing I do is I click on that first construction um, button with the walls and this is going to make my main walls for the exterior of my house. The next thing I'm going to do is click on the third one over and make some lines to make my closet and bathroom. Right now they're only lines and at the end of them you have to double click on them for them to stay. So as you can see I'm going to grab another line, make one more across and double click it. Now I have to actually turn these into walls. So I'm going to click on the line that I made, click on I for information, the wall, and it makes it a little bit thicker. Click on the I, instead of line, I want a wall. You can change it so it's a half wall over to the side, but I want to leave mine as high walls. Next thing I'm going to do is save. Please remind your students to always save their changes. And now I can go ahead and view it in 3D. So I click on my 3D button. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load. And there it is. I can click and drag so that I can see all the different walls wherever I put them. The next thing is adding wall color. You can add any wall color that you want. You can only do it in 3D though. So you have to click on the wall to click on the wall color. And unfortunately I haven't figured out how to make the different sections of walls different colors. I know that bums out my students sometimes, but it's a really neat program with or without being able to change those other walls that are separating each other. So all I have to do is click and drag to view other walls. And if any students have trouble with their wall colors not saving, I've had that issue before. I don't really have a, a fix for it. However, we always take screenshots of our 2D and 3D views when we're done. And so I just have them change the wall color and then take a screenshot right after they change it at the end. So now I'm back in 2D. The only way to drag and drop items is to do that in 2D. And again, always save. So right now I'm on flooring. All you have to do is click on the middle of your floor to add flooring. There's tons of different styles and types. A lot of my students always want to change their flooring in their um, bathrooms and closets. So you click on the second button over to do this and you just click on all the corners of the areas that you want to change and it gives it a different flooring. Again, click on it, you click information, and then again you've got all of your styles that you can change your flooring to. I'm also going to change the flooring in my bathroom. Again, I'm just clicking on all the corners until the area is covered. Click on it. You can double click and it'll go straight to here or you can click once and go to information and then choose it from there. So now I have my flooring complete. Next thing I want to do is start adding in some objects into my, into my room. So there's lots of different things you can add. I'm going to go ahead and add a bed. So I searched bed. I could also um, click over on living um, instead and find bedroom. So if you don't want to search for an actual bed. So I dragged it in here, changed the size of it, but I can also change the color by clicking on it once and going to that information. Again, I can click on it. I can turn my bedding. Sometimes the turn is a little bit tough. There we go. Again, like I was saying before, you can search by um, categories or you can just search your own in. To add in a window, I've got to actually put the window on my wall. And I can change it, or sorry, my door. Um, I can change it um, by which way it goes or I can even change the width and height of it right there. I'm going to add some French doors to my, um, into my bathroom also. And my bathroom. Again, you can move them back and forth on the wall to decide where you want to go. 
always save before you go into a 3D view. And as you can see, it's inserted my bed and my doors and my flooring. I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can go back to 2D. This time I'm going to search bathroom. That way I can find everything I need. Click and drag it in. You can always move that construction square if it gets in your way. The other thing I want to show you is how to change the elevation of things. So right now I'm going to put a TV in my room. I'm going to put it up against the wall. And what I want to do is change the elevation. So it's not on the floor, but it's hanging up on my wall. So I'm going to make the elevation higher. And sometimes you just kind of have to play with it for this. Again, I'm going to move that construction box. That's always in my way. Save my changes. You always need to do that before you head into 3D. Go into 3D view to see what it looks like. And believe it or not, it is way too high and it is turned the wrong direction. So sometimes it's hard to see objects in 2D. You've definitely got to view them in 3D um, to make sure they're right. So right now it's inside of my wall and peeking above the top. So I need to change this around a little bit. I'm gonna turn it, move it back so it's not inside of my wall. Again, I'm going to go to the eye, edit height, put down my elevation a little bit, save again, and then go to 3D. This time it is perfect. Go back to 2D, add a TV stand right underneath it. Again, I'm going to turn it around so it's at the right view. Save my changes and go to 3D once again. So I could move it down if I wanted to, to make it so it's sitting on top of the um, table, or I can just leave it up like it's hanging up on the wall. 